Three years of living and traveling full-time in an RV has allowed us to see a lot of states. And after spending time in some of the best cities that the U.S. has to offer, we finally settled in L.A. Which is lower Alabama if you're not familiar. But in this video, we want to share why we moved here, the factors that you need to consider before you move somewhere, and four common mistakes that most people make when choosing where they want to live. Before we explain why we moved here, let's first list some of the factors that you should consider when you're deciding where you want to live. Yeah, and the first is cost of living. This takes into account the general cost of living like groceries and food, but should also include things like income tax and the relative house cost and what the housing market is like. You also want to look at crime rates, demographics, young, old, middle-aged, family. What's kind of the population like in that area? You also want to look for things like job opportunities and your specific industry if you're not working remotely like us. You'll want to look for the pace of life. Do you want a fast pace, slow pace? What is that like? Political leanings, proximity to airports, proximity to terrain that you like, like the beach, the mountains, the plains, or the desert. You also want to, of course, consider proximity to family and religious leanings, school districts, and or the cost of private school in that area, and or even the cost of houses to get you into a good school district. Other things like social and professional networking groups, plus things to do like restaurants, parks, events, music, museums, all the stuff that you like doing and hobbies that you might be into. You'll want to consider the type of city that it is, like a big city or a small city versus a suburb or a really rural area. Also look at traffic and walkability. Is this mostly a driving city or walking or lots of public transit? And what would the commute be like for where you worked? And of course, the most important factors like your own budget, your timeline for how long you want to be there, and your flexibility, which basically means how is this city or this state going to impact your ability to move or change directions down the road? Is this going to give you more flexibility or less flexibility? But that's obviously like a ton to think about. It's a lot. So we found that the best place for us to start was just with dreaming. Not the kind of dreaming that Margo's doing, but the kind that kind of helps you figure out what you actually want your life to look like. Yeah, the, the best thing to do is to ask really big picture questions and not even think about money when you're starting out. So just ask questions like, if I could literally live anywhere, take out like proximity to family and take out the budget just for a second. If you could live anywhere, where would you live? If you could live in any type of house, any type of place, uh, if your job wasn't holding you back, what would be your dream location? Sort of go through all those factors that we just listed off and choose your dreams for each one of those. We've actually been having these types of conversations for years because you're really good at bringing it up like over dinner or when we're Yeah, I just I just or... asked a lot of I ask a lot of like curious <laughs> questions yeah, if you always will. ask a lot of questions um because i'm just curious it facilitates conversations we'll go hyper specific a lot and just have these conversations about your dream anything which is really helpful ultimately for when it gets down the road and we're close to actually trying to look at a house seriously so this is the part where we have to come to terms with the fact that we live in the real world yeah. and we're gonna have to make a few compromises and so when you're looking at that dream list what are the things that actually matter to you versus what are those that just kind of seemed like a cool idea of something that would be amazing to have so when it came to our list of non-negotiables and remember this video is specifically about choosing where to live we're gonna actually do another video uh, down the road about your non-negotiables and how to choose your specific house but for our list of non-negotiables for where to live it was actually relatively short now, the first and most important for us was to be within a day's drive of family, which for us means about eight hours or less. We also wanted to be warm weather, like most of the time. Mm -hmm. We really wanted to be near the beach, and we wanted to be in a small town, not like a massive city. We wanted the air to be really walkable, and we wanted to the be air. able... Air, area, sorry. <laughs> area. Um, the ability to keep the Airstream was really, really important. We didn't want to have to pay for storage, and we didn't want to need to sell the Airstream to afford to live in that location. Lastly, of course, we have to have all this fit in our budget. That basically left us the options of Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, or Louisiana. So at this point, we've got our dream list and we've got our list of absolute non-negotiables. We should st be starting to sort of pare down things a little bit. 
Now we move on to sort of our third step, which is really um, actually visiting locations and really dialing down, okay, what are the specific cities that we're um, choosing between? And let's actually go to them or at the very least talk to friends and do a lot of research online about what those cities are like and start narrowing down even further from there. As we've kind of alluded to, we found that like one of the most helpful things about having that dream list is that it helps you kind of go through that process of elimination and cross things off your list. Yeah. We knew just from our general experience and travels that we preferred Gulf Coast beaches to East Coast beaches. And so taking that into account with that radius from family, then that left us with the options of Alabama, Florida, Mississippi, and Louisiana. So with our dream list in hand, plus our list of non-negotiables, we're able to start visiting cities and those four states, all kind of in the panhandle of Florida, lower Alabama, that Gulf Coast region, start narrowing things down. And for us, it was pretty easy because you start looking around at the rest of our list, right? Some of the other nice to haves, we start factoring in things like taxes and the walkability that we really want. Um, the sort of low-key beaches, not the big party beaches. Um, we, we, we much prefer more like the slow pace. Uh, more of a retirement Retirement pace, uh, pace retirement community pace. <laughs> um, when you start factoring in all these other things, um, lower Alabama near the sort of Gulf Coast area was basically perfect. The bottom line goal for these three steps is really to maximize and get as much as possible off of your dream list while not overextending yourself and staying within your budget. And the other thing here is that you can't underestimate like your initial gut reaction. No, to a super place. important. Yeah. And so I know especially like a few areas that we visited, like it just felt super touristy. Yep. And and it was. Yeah. And there's definitely still tourism where we live now, but there's there's an underlying community there that that seemed like it was missing in the other places. Yeah. It's like most decision making. You want to do a lot of rational and sort of pencil and paper and math and numbers and all that stuff on the front end. But then you do have to just go to the area and definitely trust your gut, trust your gut at a certain point. Let's talk about some common mistakes that people make when they're choosing where to live. So the first is letting social pressure drive <laughs> your decision, which that's true for basically any Everything. decision that we yep. make in life. People get themselves into a lot of trouble with this because they might let friends or family influence their decision of where to live too much and then end up actually resenting those friends or yeah. family members later on in life. Get wisdom and counsel from friends and family, but don't let them make the decision for you. Second is overlooking a lot of little hidden costs. And one good example of a hidden cost is thinking that public education is always free. And this was actually brought up to us by uh, a friend of the channel named Heidi. She talked about how, especially with getting a good education, you're pretty much always paying. So you can pay in the form of literally paying money to go send your kids to a private school, or you're gonna pay a lot more for house prices if you're trying to get a house in a really good school district. And it's probably worth comparing and contrasting living in a really good school district in one area and the house prices there versus the house price plus private yeah. school in another area. You could actually potentially come out money ahead by getting a cheaper house and going to private school in that area. So it's just really important to not get tunnel vision with these sorts of things and always make sure that you're looking at each individual factor on the list that we talked about from multiple angles. The third mistake is getting in a rush to buy something before they understand the nuances of an area. In particular, the area where we live, you're gonna pay a lot more for things over here than yes. you are over here. On, on the west side, you're close to the bay within like a mile and a half. And on the east side, obviously you're further out. But if you're on the less expensive side, you're sacrificing a lot in walkability. Yes. So at first we kind of talked ourselves into that other side of the highway. Um, and then just through a series of events, uh, we ended up not buying on that side. And we've been so glad that we didn't sacrifice the walkability because there are a lot of nights and we'll decide to go out to eat and we just walk right downtown and go yeah. to eat. And it's just, it's just nice. We just really value that. And it would make a big difference if we were having to walk two miles downtown instead of like a little over half a mile to get down there. Well, and cross the highway, right? Yeah. I always caution people, don't just move there and buy. Rent or Airbnb a place or at least spend some time walking around and learning the area there so that were, you can really 
really figure out what makes the most sense for yeah. you. There were even certain streets that were super close together where we looked at, uh, you know, a house on each street. And for whatever reason, one street just felt way more claustrophobic yeah. than the other one. And it's those things that you don't pick up on unless you like really go and like walk around and experience it. And I don't know. See it first. Just hand. explore it. Yeah. Yes. If you get impatient and you jump into buying something, you might end up with something that A, you're not happy with, or B, you can't really actually afford. And both of those are really bad options. Yeah. Well, they're going to lead you to being stuck in something that is more difficult to get out of, which kind of leads us to the fourth common mistake, which is really undervaluing flexibility. So for me and Hannah, this is a conversation we had throughout the whole, basically the whole last year that we were looking at buying a house and where we were going to do that. Like we mentioned, we wanted to keep the Airstream, which means we still wanted to be able to travel in an RV, which means if we bought as literally big a house as the bank would basically allow us to, um, we're not going to have any money to actually be able to travel and do some of the other stuff that we want to do. We also bought a house that's eight hours from family and one day we may decide we don't want to live here anymore. We, we may want to move and be closer to family. You know, you're, you're not always going to want the same living situation throughout every phase of your life. And so for us, we've been very conscious about buying a house that we could turn around and sell if we need to, or we could get out of this situation. Um, we're not going to be handcuffed to a certain thing if we really decide to change our minds down the road. If you found this video as helpful as Margo did, we hope that you'll subscribe to the channel because once you choose which city you want to live in, you're going to need help deciding on your dream house. And that's what we're talking about next week. You're such a good prop.